And welcome back to Jeff Kanange Live here on this Mashu Jar Day. My goodness. When Francis Atuoli shows up, you know it's going to be hot. And he's gotten up a couple of times. I thought he was, uh, well, doesn't matter what I really think right now, but uh, he's calling it. None of us are, uh, we can't foresee the future. We can't foretell what's going to happen. So, you know, you can't tell who's going to be president in 20. You can speculate. You know, but you can't say, you know, William Ruto will not. You can't say that. You, Let me tell you. You can't tell. Where Francis Atul is, it doesn't rain. It doesn't rain. You know the rains? Yes. It doesn't rain where I am. Why? So take me serious when I'm telling you about something. It might not be me, but listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Don't say you didn't listen to me. Huh? Yeah. I'm not saying that William can't be a president. 2027, he can't be a president. Or after 2027, it will be 2032 or something like that. He will be a president. He can't be. But what I have said, and I have said it repeatedly from 2014, that this time he's not going to be the president. And the reason is? Pre you're going to prepare yourself. If Raila will declare himself as a president, start preparing yourself for his presidency. Or if AUKUS, you have asked and they are organizing themselves and they are endorsed by no any other person other than Raila Bolodinka, uh, who is a shrewd politician and a terrible organizer, then you start preparing for whoever will be the president. But, but let's, let's admit it, it's a two-horse race right Absolutely. Current, that is why I said if elections are called now, please prepare yourself to receive Raila Amolodinga. Prepare yourself. And if even he, that, ma eh? what if he doesn't declare? What if he says he's not going? He's you know he's tired. He's not going to run. What if he you says? You know, uh, I have never seen somebody like that who reinvents himself time and again. You know, you asked me about BBI. I told you BBI would have not collapsed, but it was a cold war between the judiciary and the executive. He, and he was the one who was leading the campaign. And today, his excellent the president mentioned all those places where BBI had been sensitized, from Kakamega, where Mombasa, everywhere. Narok, where we had gone popularizing BBI. So you cannot say because it was not, uh, there was not enough information, the way judges, it was politically uh, ruled out of order because of the Cold War between the judiciary and the executive. Those rulings were political, like the recent uh, ruling on Uduma. Card. One of our people have gone through the have gone Uduma way. You have only one card, you know, in the Europe. Uh, it, it has everything of you. have selling any information, every type of anything called data of Jeff Koinange is under one card. So that is where the world is going. And if there was any defect, uh, defective uh, legislation uh, to to, to take care of that party once that and so on, what the judge would have ruled, uh, or he would have given a ruling asking the government of parliamentarians to amend the law, uh, you see, to be in to, to, to have a new law covering the 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 the, the, the new Uduma uh, card or Uduma registration instead of outlawing it. The judge would have. Ordered like that. Okay, we're talking about um, a person reinventing himself and you didn't finish that point. Yeah, I was telling you, after BBI, who knew that he was going to come up with another slogan that he's now using to rebrand himself from where he's going, which is now talking about the unity of Kenyans and what have you. That is a new slogan. Yeah. Okay, what's your point? That's why I'm telling you that if you underrated him, then you will be at loss. But you didn't answer my question. My question was, what if he decides not to run and back? Th that would be at his okay. position. That's what I'm saying. But he might also, when he decides, he will have to say somebody torture. If he indeed he did. That is what I told you here. Indeed, if he said, the way he said Kibaki Tosha. Mm. Nobody argued. By 10 a.m., Kibaki was our president. And I'm telling you, if he himself decides, by 10 a.m., he would be the president and there would be no rerun. 
I've already told you this. Come on. Even if he, let's say he endorses someone from OKA, let's say, you know, Kalonzo Musioka or Musalia Mudabudi, who, or, or who, Gideon. Or whoever he will touch on what if he, and campaigns for him. And he says Tosha. Yeah. That but, person can beat Ruto? But, but that, let me tell you, as, as I'm seeing things myself, I haven't talked to him for late. Even when I saw him at the other place, because I've been very busy, I was in Egypt, came back, went at the coast, trying to do my own things here and there, and also doing work as things. We had National Labor Board in Mombasa. I have, I've not been able to meet him. But I'm telling you, I've not asked him. The moves he has made in a few weeks, in a few days, you know, I don't think somebody will be able to negotiate with him as well. Because in a position of leading or taking an onslaught in his own hands and making a decision. But you, see, but you hosted a lot of these people in your range in, uh, at Ildamad. You've hosted a lot of them. You must, you must be reading the tea leaves here. You must be able to know who it's going to be, who that person is. And don't say it's too early. No, by that time we were weighing things, looking at things the way they are, and asking ourselves a lot of questions. Where Kenya is going? You know Kenya is more bigger than all of us. If somebody, put, if somebody puts Kenya on fire, all of us will perish. Those were the things we were looking at. By that time, we had not said, and up to now, we had not said who is going to do what. Even when we asked him, you know, we had all these problems of COVID-19 and what have you. Eh? But when it little bit went down, and then he decided, why people are saying that I can't climb Mount Kenya? They decided two to three days. I've seen what has happened there. I've seen what has happened in Eldoret. And yet he has not yet started. So what about now if he says, I have now launched, I'm now launching my political onslaught. As from today, this is my program. And I want to look, I'm looking around to see who is with me and who is not with me. It would be a different issue. But as I've told you, we still have a, up to three months that, uh, that they will be doing some adjustments here and there, uh, including those in Oka, those who are, and also Jubilee might be thinking either to go Nakwe, as I was reading in a newspaper, and so on. A lot of changes will be, political changes will be taking place uh, to shape the 2022 elections. And do you think the president will endorse him eventually, if he runs? Let me tell you, the president is free to endorse anybody he so wishes. He's a voter. He's in politics. But that does not mean whoever president has endorsed is a government project. He's a Kenyan. Like me, I'm saying like this because I'm a Kenyan. That is why I speak free. Our people died for freedom of speech. And that is why I'm giving you this information for free. And I hope and trust Kenyans are watching me. Because there is nobody who will candidly come out and tell you what I'm telling you. And this is the truth. The truth is God. He who speaks the truth or who, is, who loves the truth is with God. And you cannot defeat him. Yeah, the truth will also set you free, they say. Absolutely. So what I'm telling you is that uh, uh, let's be prepared for 2022. And 2022, as I'm talking to you right now, you can see the two leading contenders. And that's why I was telling you that if elections are called today, then Kenyans must be prepared for Raila Molodinga. That is for free. You can take it to the bank if you so wish. You can take it to the bank if the elections will be free, fair, and verifiable. This is the same person who said that uh, Donald Trump would win a second term. But I told you the reason you when I was that. here. But you're the same. He was going to win. What? If it were he not for. Not win. Uh, if it were not for Floyd, the man that was killed like this. You know, once you kill, finish, when your government kills, something can happen when two minutes of the election and it deters your chances. It was not a question of try and error. He had not, uh, you know. That is what dented his Im the image of Trump's government. What? And I told you you stayed with me in America. 
99, if not, if not 100% of Americans are racists, the real Americans. They are racists. Even Obama to come in, if it were not for uh, uh, collapsed economy, they wouldn't have voted for Obama. They like people they, who, who talk like Trump. Uh, that, that's what the America, such people are the people that Americans like. By the way, he still believes he won, huh? Yeah. He still believes. Uh, absolutely. Still believes. He was going to win. You see, it was so narrow. But then people said, how can somebody be killed and our president can't say something? Just like that? So those few votes, they denied him. Like Israni Akuwa Mutu. That caused him to lose elections. So you say something small. The death of George Floyd is what turned. Absolutely. And I told you when I was here last time. No, you said that Trump. That was the cause, yeah. Yeah. But you had said he would win. He was going to win. Are you saying Raila is going to win? Who do we believe? Which are do we believe? Let me tell you. Let me tell you, my friend. It's just like what you were asking him on BBI. If BBI was subjected for referendum, it would have sailed it through. What I'm telling you, irrespective of a lot of things, and I've told you there would be a lot of movements between now and 2022 elections. But what I've told you, be prepared. If elections were called today, Raila would win. Even if they are called after, and I've said, and I repeat, even if there would be somebody who would win elections, this person would not be William Samuel Ruto. That one I'm emphatic. You know, I'm going to play this. I'm not wavering on that one. If you lose on this one, you know we're going to be playing this tape over and over again. And I'm telling you for sure and for free. You can put on that tape. And there are a lot of people who are recording our speeches here. <laughs> and I've already assured them that I'm not in transit. We live near Uganda. I'm not going to Uganda. Nor am I going to Ethiopia. I will remain here, I will be buried here. And I'm telling Kenyans the truth. If you wanted to bet, don't bet on William Samoy Root, because he's not going to win the elections. My friend, in any case, people should be worried more, and not people like me. People who should be worried should be you people. I've told you this. Because if you see somebody is looking for him, a and Mwalimu Nyerere said, if you see somebody is serious, because immediately after elections, this young man started campaigning. And Mwalimu Nyerere said, if you see somebody says, and attack when I could, and attack when I could, you kill a Ogopa or Yomutu. Nimutu Hatari. Why? And I would advise young people, the presidency is the most guarded area of a person. The presidency is the most, uh, a president is a person who is the first prisoner is a president. For young people, you can do other jobs. You wait until when you are old. And then you say you want to venture for that particular position, not for a young person. You're trying to say young people can't buy for the presidency. Come on, what's wrong with that? They, I'm not saying young people should not. I'm advising them that they should be able to do other things, build a nation. Look at the uh, French president or the Canadian prime minister. Young people, 30s, 40s. You know what happens in Europe? You can board a bus with a president. People are not bothered about who is leading. People yeah. are worried about the weather and whether the economy is performing or not. People are worried of what they will eat tomorrow. Politics is not priority in the developed world. Here, politics is everything. In the churches, politics, you go to the mosque, politics, you go in a welfare society's politics, you go to football's politics, you go into your own house, politics. You go to Kotu, politics. Court is managed professionally <laughs> <laughs> with 47 lawyers uh, and 30 economists. Mm. And, uh, solidarity building. Okay. And all over. Yeah, but there's politics. Uh, come on, come on. I mean, if you say there's politics everywhere, it's got to be in your organization as well. Ah, but if you professionalize, then people will be doing work for others. People are busy in the boardroom signing agreements. <laughs> All right. Before I go to the magic wall, what do you think of the president lifting the curfew today after 18, 19? No, that was good. Hmm? 
particularly when we are nearing Christmas, that was a very good gift to Kenyans. Very good gift to Kenyans. Uh, what they should do, they should redouble their efforts in vaccination. Mm -hmm. Should make sure that every Kenyan is vaccinated. That is the only thing. But he did a commendable job because most of our businesses are in small, medium enterprises. And these people are suffering. People who own bars, people who own small, small businesses that are supposed to operate 24 hours, these people are losing. So I think the president did a commendable job. I commend him for that. On behalf of the people that I represent, most of them who are lowly placed Kenyans, he did a good job to, to vacate the curfew and uh, let Kenyans do their businesses. But you know, Kenyans, you know, we kind of like to overdo things, huh? How? Staying in the bars too late, too late and uh, you know, mm -hmm. overdoing things. This is all over. You have been to New York. <laughs> Just uh, did you go down there? Yeah, I did. <laughs> 24 hour service. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, yeah. that is life. Uh, that is um, when people overdo things and uh, uh, when we have pubs operating 24 economy that operates 24 hours, uh, that is the economy. It's part of economic development. Mm. And those are the things that people should put if you want to spur economic growth in your country, you must address those areas. Those are the areas that you can tap economic growth. The economic growth uh, uh, stems from uh, small entrepreneurs to the bigger entrepreneurs and those uh, who operate both direct and indirect investment, and particularly in manufacturing. You export, you really manufacture something to export for foreign exchange. It's not a question of bottom up. Bottom up, how do you say bottom up? Well, bottom up from where? From nil to up. Uh, you must put something down there where you are calling bottom to create uh, employment or uh, to, uh, to, to spar or to make something that will be able to, you will be able to export and get money. Those, that, that's what can grow economy. And in digital economy, you must also do away with things related to land, capital, and labor so that you can allow people to work from wherever they are uh, using smart uh, working, smart uh, uh, instruments, smart telephones, smart television, mm -hmm. smart communication, uh, and uh, digital or e-commerce, and people getting their commission, where you can be able to open bank account in New York uh, when you are in Kiamba, and when, where you can be able to open an office in New York when you are in Kiamba and where you can be able to buy barrels of oil or bananas in Uganda, sell in Morocco, and you are in Kiamba. Uh, that is how uh, you can grow economy in a modern way uh, of, uh, of, 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 in the world of, of, of digital mm. how economy. Did you, how did you know I was from Kiamba, by the way? How did you know? Just asking. OK, let's go to the magic wall. Lots of tweets coming in very thick and very fast, SG. You've created a storm of controversy here, but, you know, you call it like it is. You call it like it is. Do we have any? Here we go. Uh -huh. Tweets coming in so thick and so fast. Richie Engineer says, ask Atwoli who will be the likely running mate for Raila. Oh, good question. Who will be the likely running mate? I don't know. I don't know. Guess, take a guess. I don't know. Someone from the mountain or someone from Western? No, I don't know. I... Because with the, with the lessons that we learned recently, the presidential candidate must choose his running mate wisely. Otherwise, you will be where President Uhuru is with his deputy. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary Chem Joe says, ask at only one, the Musalia Kalonzo factor in the 2022 elections. Does he think they have a chance of winning? Two, we have seen him saying he will share a list of leaders to be voted in Western. Is that democracy? <laughs> <laughs> Hillary. So, Musalia Kalonzo factor in 2022. They have a following, but they might be up to something else. Because we don't know up to now, if you ask me what Oka is, I can't tell you. For real, I can't tell you. And yet you're supposed to be a spokesman for Western. 
No, I, I'm, I'm not a spokesperson for Western. I'm a coordinator. I was appointed to coordinate what are you with co whoever will be the leading co contender to negotiate, to move close to him and say, where is the cake for the Western Kenya people? That's your job? Yeah, that's my job. Not to ask, how did you get this cake? You have a cake, where is our slice? <laughs> <laughs> Captain Mwendo say, ask Adwoli about his prediction on the future of OKA. OK, he said, will OKA guys be on the presidential ballot? Do you think they'll be? Uh, will anyone, Musale, Mudavidi, Kalonzo, Musioka? I don't know what they are up to up to now, if you ask to me. You don't know what they're up to? I don't know. I wrote to them a letter they have never What would you advise them right now? Because they were supposed to pick one amongst themselves and they were not able to. You know, let, me, let me tell you in politics. If you are not careful and somebody picks something, he runs away with it, you will not be able to catch him. It's up to them to know how will they be able to catch up. Catch up with who? Particularly when the two now, Ruto is running, yeah. Raila, though he has not officially declared, but he's showing signs of running also. What about if they are 330 kilometers away, how will they be able to catch them? It's up to them. That's a question we need to ask them. Sami Abeno says the deciding factor in elections is the people. Why is it totally sure of an outcome of the elections? What, what makes you so sure of what you just said? You know, unless, uh, if I was not born here, I've given examples why I'm sure. People do vote, yes. I'm not saying people are not vote. And I've already said the turnout will be moments. People will turn out in large numbers to go and vote. I've said like that. But what I'm sure of is who will not, who will not win. That one, I'm sure. You know, KJ, he said hello to you, Moshimua KJ. Yeah. I'm Sana. He says, look, there's something you are forgetting. It's called the generational factor. There's a whole generation of Kenyans, yeah. young Kenyans, yeah. who are thinking one way. That is what we were being told before we elected Kibaki. Before we elected Kibaki during Moi's time. 2002. Yeah, they were saying the young generation. When 2002 came, we, did we elect a young person or we elected Mike back? Those are just uh, slogans. When the reality dawns on us, we say, wait a minute. In whose hands are we safe? <laughs> that is what you should tell JK. It's not a question of generational. Shalaha, Dennis says, kindly ask us to all if he understands Kenyan political dynamics as he claims. Why hasn't he presented himself for election? <laughs> because I fear being defeated. Oh. Yeah. The fear of failure. Yeah, fear of failure. <laughs> Very good point. Yeah. Very honest point. I'm a bad loser. I don't like losing. I'm a bad loser. If I did lose, I can't eat. So I better stay in the corner where I am safe. <laughs> <laughs> Point noted. <laughs> Saidi Kaitani, ask Atuoli, what does he think about the Kakamega County gubernatorial seat hopefuls as the incumbent exits? Kakamega County. Yeah, there is one bright fellow. There are some bright fellows uh, whom Kenyans can look at. But, oh, 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 um, the Kakamega people can look at. But then, uh, as somebody has said, let us see how it goes on. But one of them will have to emerge. Uh, uh, it's an area that we are still looking at. Uh, currently, we have uh, a good number of uh, good candidates. Uh, who can be able to replace the one exiting? You're not saying any. You're not saying very much, by the way. Eh? You're just you're, you're dancing around it. Say, name the person. No, what I'm telling you, we have several uh, candidates on that particular position, but it is shaping up, and uh, as we move closer to December, mm. uh, the clear cut. 
of who is taking. Yeah. In other words, you're not saying anything. Okay. Toby <laughs> Korea is asking, what is Atwali, what's Atwali's opinion on Dr. Mukisa Kitui's presidential ambition? I have told you time and again here that if you want to get a bright person, it's Dr. Mukisa Kitui. If he's given an opportunity. But then the question comes in politics, are you given or you fight for it? That is, is the brightest fellow we have in Western Kenya. He can make a wonderful leader. But what's the problem? What, what, is it be given? What's the problem with us? I think he has to fight. And he's said. Uh, Kibaki didn't fight. Mm. It didn't look like he was a fighter. Come on, let's face it. And the person he was facing was the president's project then. Let me tell you. Do you know how Kibaki became a president? Go ahead. Kibaki, he was a mathematician. He was an economist. Mathematicians. Yeah, economists are mathematicians. Mathematicians are strategic people. What you need to do is to position yourself in a strategic position and you keep quiet. Even when Raila went to him, he said, have you come with Musaria? Raila said, I think we can get him. Then he said, if Musaria is coming, we will support him. That evening, Musaria had been taken by President Moy's group to become a vice president for three months. So he lost out. Now he knew without Musaria, he's the next now. This is the, you know, he positioned himself in a strategic position. There are people who are like that. That is what William Ruto does said, no. He says, I want to fight. You don't fight. How do you fight? People will go to the drawing board and they will ask themselves, why is he fighting for this position? And they will do their drawings there. When he's here, we will be here. When he's here, we will be here. But sometimes you are required to act a fool. You strategize in your, a position that when they have looked around, there is nobody they are seeing Jeff. And then they say, Jeff Tosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is Gibaki. <laughs> By the way, in if you are not there, there is, not, there, 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 is, there is nothing for you. By the way, by the time those people were coming downstairs from the Serena Hotel, yeah. nobody knew who Rella was going to endorse that time. Nobody knew. Was yeah. Nyachai, was it, they didn't know. Yeah, but let me tell you, between Nyachai and Kibaki, uh, in the absence of Musaria, Kibaki knew he's the one who will be the next. Quietly. Though he had not gone into what Raila was thinking, because Raila was not offering himself as a candidate. He knew people would ask themselves, in whose hands are we safe? Is it in the hands of Nyachai or in the hands of Kibaki? And as you know, the child was authoritarian. You know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the child was a disciplinarian. So people said, in whose hands are we safe? Even Raila himself knew, in whose hands am I safe? Then the answer automatically was, in Kibaki's hands we are safe. <laughs> this is the same question I've been asking you here, 2022. In whose hands are we safe? Even if you are a blind person, you should open up your eyes and know in whose hands this nation, Kenya, will be safe in 2022. Even for the generational acumen, those who are saying, oh, there is a generational change. In whose hands will they be safe? That is very important. And if the Kenyans forget, and I want Kenyans to record this, I truly ask, 2022, in whose hands Kenyans will be safe? The same man who said Kibaki Tosha 20 years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, is, is he going to say Mimi Tosha? It is Kenyans who say Yeye Tosha. The way the governors were saying in Mount Kenya, that in your hands we are safe. Let me tell you, a normal person, person who has something to do, is worried of his or her security. People would like to do their businesses freely without hindrance. 
without cohesion, without push and pull, without thoraxes, without it, intimidation, without it, harassment, without, uh, you know, we, without uh, revenging, without, you know, that is the open fear anybody would have. People want to travel on safe lanes. And that is why people invest in people who can safeguard and protect them and who can lead them in a humane way. And that is the question I've been asking you, my friend. And the we had problems with you in the US. Sometimes it can be damn cold during the month of January, December. You were there, I was there. Yeah. Kenya is the only safest place for us here. And this is the place where you better die and be buried. Here, in this country here. And this is our country, country of our ancestors. In whose hands are we safe? In whose hands are we safe? Jeff, in whose hands are we safe? Oh God. Ooh. I wish Kenyans are listening to me. I wish so that nobody will regret. Why but God is great because it will never happen. Why do you fear this man so much? William Samoy Arabrut. Why do you fear him so much? Can I ask you, uh, can I give you an exercise? From here, ask 10 people you meet. Start with the first one. That is a very simple, you know, a simple research which does not require you to go to any school of researchers. What's the, what's the question? <laughs> question, ask himself, in whose hands will we be safe in 2022? Because people have known presidential candidates who have declared their candidature. Try to ask the first 10 people you meet. Call me before midnight today. Okay. Oh, no, before, before two. I'm going to wait for your call. <laughs> <laughs> In whose hands will you be safe? After 2022 elections. Because you people, you think, you know, if it is worrying even the president, it is worrying every politician. It is worrying, you know. If somebody says something today, today he says something, tomorrow he says somebody is not consistent in what is, you know, if you are listening to him carefully, and you can go and listen to his clips, he's not consistent. Which means he can change any time and say yes, people like Atuoli, people like the rest, people like Jeff, they wanted amendments of constitution. Now let's go for a referendum. Ask yourself what type of a new constitution will he come up with? I'm telling you, you must see ahead of where you are going for the survival of your, f that is why, that is why you are ahead of the family. Even if mama thinks more than what you do. You know very well. Part of my family is I have people who think more than me. Including my wife, Mary. She's very good. And even she advises me sometimes. Sometimes I behave as if I have not listened to her. But I know the advice valid. But then I remain the head of the family. How do I protect this family? If you are a man who cannot be able to protect your family, protect your children, and for a see that if this bush is not cleared, we will have snakes here. Snakes are dangerous to members of my family. Then you don't need to exist. I don't want to die with this information. I'm telling Kenyans, to ask themselves, in whose hands will we be safe after 2022 elections? If you know that, 
then if you have not registered as a voter, tomorrow go and register as a voter. Plain and simple. Simple. Any more predictions? Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. I'm listening. Jeff, I will not be on this bench until after elections. Jeff, and I want to tell you, I started 2014. William Samoy Ruto will not be the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. Take it to the bank. That's it. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's it. <laughs> well, if you're wrong, you said the same thing about Donald Trump. You said the same thing about BBI. You know, you've been wrong before. I've never been wrong. You've been wrong before. I've never been wrong. BBI out of 47 counties, 45 counties endorsed. Yeah, but it died on the right. Yeah. You know. Oh, that is, I've told you. Yeah. Cold blood between, yeah. between, yeah, but they, between they, the executive and judiciary. Yeah, but no, they. And you know the reasons why. You are not from the moon. You know that. You know all this. What these young men judges are doing. You know what they means to get. What? You are not from heaven. <laughs> you should be able to know why do they hate the government of President Uhuru. Why? Ask yourself. You don't know. As a Kenyan. I don't know. This is an obvious thing. And even if I didn't go to school of uh, law or I didn't do law uh, or I didn't have an access to laws, I have lawyers in my house. The rulings against BBI were political. If you listen to them carefully, apart from Justice yes. Sichari, if you listen to them carefully, political. Because BBI, for example, it was beneficial to everybody. Today, let me tell you, after five years, people go on fighting and so on. And then you see somebody saying, oh, ini mambo ya watu kujiongeza vieo, ini matu mambo ya kufanya. If watu wa jiongeza vieo, and then we have a peaceful country, what is wrong in that? Na wewe pia ukipata, utataka watu kujiongeza vieo. What are you looking for? Kama chiyo chewe unatafuta. And then you listen to a such a person. And you clap for him. And it's one man who wants to run with everything. Where is your security in his government? Where is your security, Jeff? Mine? Yes. I, I don't. Where is your security, Jeff? I don't need security. Jeff, you will have a problem. I'm not related to President Uhuru Kenyatta. What, what's that got to do huh? with the price of tea in China? What does that have to do with anything? Huh? What does that have to do with it? You will be the first one to be arrested and be asked to you, Jeff. You used to host Francis Atwoodi. Atwoodi used to say these things yeah. here. Now, can you be able to answer? How did you know this person? Oh, Jeff, we have uh, before you come out, before you get a lawyer, <laughs> <laughs> and the best lawyer who can bail you out is only Lim Dogga. Before, <laughs> before you get Lim Dogga to bail you out of this problem, you would have answered a lot of questions. So you and I will be in the same boat then? No, not me. What do you mean? Ah. Me, I would be at advanced age. Even if I appear before a judge, I would be discharged. <laughs> that is one. Two, if I would be still doing what I'm doing yeah. uh, as an official of the International Labour Organization, which is a UN agency, I'm internationally protected. Oh. Yeah, of course. So you're just going to leave us? Uh, yeah, yeah. Throw no, us under but the but I'm advising you. <laughs> I'm advising you. It is you who I'm advising. <laughs> Don't get into problems and say, I was not told. Uh, yeah. I thought, Don't say, I was not told. And I told you in my head here, there is no cow dung. I don't smoke, nor do I drink alcohol. I'm fresh and open <laughs> like a police station's door. So ever open. Ruto doesn't drink too, you know that? Yeah, I know. He totally, totally doesn't drink or smoke. But you see, you can, if you have a lot of money, you can get drunk also. You have power, you have money. You cannot listen to anybody for an advice. 
This is free advice I've been giving him. <laughs> Go slow to your boss, it's a big advice. Listen to what he says. Don't be more wise or clever than your boss. Don't try to undo your boss. You go to the boss's, you know, backyard, and then you say, whoever wants to see, to come here must go to Rumi. And the owner of the place is still alive. Jeff! Are you listening, Jeff? I'm listening. I'm telling you that these are open truths. You said, what about if somebody came into your bedroom? This is the same question I'm throwing to you. What about somebody who comes into your bedroom yourself? That bedroom is your bedroom. You yourself, Jeff. How do you feel? You talked about Kiamba. Somebody says, we want in Kiamba. We want in this place here. We want. Meaning that in Kiamba is Z. Z stands for zero. How do you feel? It's deep. Huh? How do you feel? These are open facts that people need. We used to be told by the, the late President Moy, be mindful of other people's welfare. Yeah, but the political tide has changed. Oh. Does it erase history? It doesn't. I told you we had Kapenguria 6. Recently we had Okambo or ICC 6. Why did it change that tide? Kikuyus and Luos came together and they outwitted everybody in 1963, formed the government. Has that changed now the handshake between Luos and Kikuyus? My friends, the world has an axis and it rotates on axis. The world is round. What goes round? Comes around. Uh -huh. So you can't say I'm a modern man now. This is my father didn't do this. I want to change the gate of this home. Uh, this is a place, you know. You say what is this? My father brought this, my mother. It's a old woman, she doesn't. My father didn't know what he was doing. If you know how your mother, how beautiful she was, how she attracted your dad. You will always <laughs> remember and, and respect your dad. <laughs> All right. Before I let you go, SG. I say you are modern because you have a modern wife. You are father. <laughs> Jeff. These are open facts that people need to know. They are basic. These are basic things in life, basic things in leadership, best things that you need to know. How to humble yourself before those who are, you don't say we are equal. If you are equal. Okay, speaking of which, what happened with this uh, phrase of yours? You've taken it to, uh, you want to copyright this phrase or you want to- No, I told you that was, those, uh, that, that were, those were my lawyers, lawyers in our offices. You I think they thought about something. You know, everything has a trademark. They thought it was good because it was unique to me and it was a unique thing that you prompted me to come up with. So they were happy, just like everybody is happy about it. Recently, I was in Mombasa at, at Nyamachoma place. Everybody was coming to me, Allah, Allah, and wants to have a photograph with Allah and Allah. So it's a unique thing. I think they were looking for protection of that particular thing right. as a trademark. But there's nothing wrong in that. Okay. I was not involved. I have lawyers. I have a team of lawyers acting on different issues. So we actually. can use that word. It's okay. Be your, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously. obviously you can Allah? Use it. Allah? Yeah. Allah? 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 <laughs> <laughs> and it was here. It was right here yeah, eight yeah. months ago. When you are asking questions like the ones you have been asking, so I told you, Jeff, Allah. And that is how it is. When you tell me, oh, this is what is going to happen, I'm telling you, in your area in Mount Kenya, I don't know whether it will remain the same up to April next year. And the boss has not spoken. Mm. And the boss did not appoint himself as a leader of Mount Kenya. There were people there like Njenga Karume, like Mze, I admired and I still admire. Death is bad, Mze Michuki, and others. 
who said, before you talk to anybody in Mount Kenya, please go through our political leader. There is no vacuum in Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya has honors, just like in Western Kenya where I come from. There is no vacuum in Western Kenya. You can go there on the markets, you can do anything in Western Kenya. You can say like I saw somebody wrote in a newspaper, oh, Luyas have about 17 tribes. We are not tribes. Those are Luya clans. We have only one tribe, Luya. You can go there singing on the market. But we will be there. We will be there. We will be there advising our people this is the way. We will be there. We will be there. We will be there. In whose hands? Will you feel safe in 2022? That is the question. All right. And that is what I would post to my people. In whose hands are we safe? Allah. 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 <laughs> Coaching Secretary General <laughs> Francis Atoli. Well, that question, that's the question, and I know it has been recorded. In whose hands are we safe? Do the math. At Kwe Nanga Jeff, at Susan TV, can you the hashtag? JK Live. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Happy Mashuja Day to you. Happy Mashuja Day, SG. I'm a Shuja. You are a Shuja. And I remember Shujas who were there before me. Yes. And Joseph Martin Shikuku. Ah, uh, the what, people's watchman. Absolutely. Wonderful man. Uh, like Kagya man I admired. Build that Kagya. The Kagya. Ah, uh, Sergio Mokinata. Heroes. Ah, uh, heroes. Thanks so much. And all you heroes uh, out there, thank you. I, 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 part of the show. And I'm such, and I'm such a Hero. Uh, hero. Mashuja. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. The first minister of education. Correct. Thank you. Good night, good luck, and God bless this country of ours. Go, Kenya. Okay. <laughs> Allah.